Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your JPEGs and tell me what you found difficult about processing the scene and I'll try and give you advice. Thank you very much to Tom Leeson for sending me over today's image. It's a very beautiful, impacting shot with some lovely sun rays here and some beautiful details in the tree. Tom didn't use digital blending initially and he wanted to see how it would turn out if we use my personal workflow. Now I'm going to warn you, if you're not a big fan of post-processing, this tutorial probably isn't for you because there's going to be a lot of post-processing and we're going to completely transform the scene. That's not to say that Tom's image isn't nice, I just want to go down a different path so that we can learn some useful techniques along the way. And eventually we're going to end up with this scene. And I'm going to show you how to do this in this tutorial. These are the two exposures we'll be working with and this is the base exposure and you can see we have some very strong beautiful highlights here and we have a darker exposure where we're just going to control those highlights a little bit. So in Adobe Camera Raw the only thing I want to do is change the temperature of the image and just make it a lot warmer because it's a little bit cold right now. Next I'm just going to go to Lens Corrections and make sure Enable Lens Profile Corrections is checked and so is Remove Chromatic Aberration. When that's done I'm going to drag these photos into Photoshop. With our images in Photoshop I have my darker exposure on top and the base exposure on the bottom. And I'm going to blend in the darker exposure using luminosity masks. And I'm going to use Raya Pro for this. But in the description of this video on YouTube you can see a link to a video that will teach you how to make your own luminosity masks if you don't have any software to do it for you. Or you'll also see a link to my easy panel which will create luminosity masks for you and that's completely free. So I'm going to start by creating a black mask on the dark exposure. Then I'm going to create some bright luminosity masks. And in our channels we can see that we have some nice luminosity masks but I think the best one is Brights 2. And I think this will give us the best selection because it gives us a nice selection of the brighter areas, they're nice and white in the mask, while the darker areas are nice and dark in the mask. So they shouldn't be too affected by the blending process. If we use a Brights 1, for example, the foreground to me is just a little bit too bright. So if we start blending in the exposure, we'll start to see that we'll darken the foreground. And Brights 3 and Brights 4 and 5 and 6 are just a little bit too contrasting. We need our masks most of the time to be nice and smooth. So to choose Bright 2, I'm just going to go to Raya Pro and choose Brights 2. And now we've made our selection, I'm going to press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants. I'm going to choose a white paintbrush with an opacity of 100 and just make it nice and big. And just blend in this darker exposure. And now I'm going to do the same up here and just do it a couple of times just to strengthen the effect and down the side here. Now I'm going to deselect the current selection by pressing Command and D or Control and D and I'm going to brighten up this area because I think it's just a little bit too dark. It doesn't look very natural now. So I do that by opening up a curves layer and just creating a clipping mask. And I'm going to bring up the highlights significantly because I really like the strong sunshine in this area. But if we feel like the sun's getting a little bit overexposed, we can set our foreground to black, make sure we have an opacity of around 50 or 40 percent, and just press once in that area. So we still have a nice natural contrast adjustment, but our sun isn't overexposed. Next, actually, I'm going to crop the image. Just going to bring it in because I feel like the space on the left isn't really adding to the composition. There's a lot going on here so we need to be more focused with what our viewer sees. I really like the details in this tree so I think it would be perfect if this tree frames the image just like this tree is doing on the right. I think it's adding some nice balance. I'm also going to bring the crop up significantly because I don't think the foreground is really helping the composition either. It's just kind of loose trees or bushes and it doesn't really help. And finally I'm going to bring this down 
ever so slightly just to tighten the composition a bit more. And with each compositional change here, we're forcing the viewer to look more at the details in this beautiful tree and the sun, and also this area, which we're going to add emphasis to now. To enhance this area, if you're a Raya Pro user, you can go to Raya Pro, Enhance, Enhancements, and just choose Glow Free. If you're not a Raya Pro user, we just open up a new layer and change our Blend Mode to Overlay. Now, we can choose a paintbrush and set the foreground to a color which is going to complement this scene. So let's say a nice beige color. I think that looks good. And press OK. Now, with the nice size paintbrush, we can just paint in the foreground. Look at how beautiful that is. Now, remember, I've still got the opacity of 40%. So actually, I'm going to bring that up to 100% really strengthen the effect. I'm going to create a second layer and do the same thing, but this time I'm going to brighten up this area. And I'm going to bring the opacity all the way down. Now I'm going to create a mask on this layer and set my paintbrush and foreground to black and just mask out the changes on this tree, you can see we illuminated the side of the tree slightly. And it did look nice, so we're going to do that again later. But for now, we're just going to leave it without any emphasis. So those two changes have just added some beautiful light to the foreground. And they've instantly changed the dynamic of the image. Initially, the sun was the first thing that caught our eye. And now we're being led to this beautiful area, which is being bathed by the sun. So now we can really add some warmth to the side of this tree. And I'm going to do that by choosing Raya Pro and going to Luminosity Masks again. First, I'll delete my bright luminosity masks because we don't want too many masks lying around. Then I'll create some dark luminosity masks. And we want to make a nice selection of this tree. So we go to our channels and we can look at our channels. And basically, we're looking for a selection of the tree that isn't going to affect most of the areas around it. And I think this is a good selection. So I'm going to choose Darks 4. And to do that, I'm going to open up a new layer first and change the blend mode of this to Overlay. Then I'm going to open up Raya Pro and just choose Darks 4. I'll make the marching ants invisible and I'll make sure my foreground is still set and we still have that nice beige color from before. Now I'll make a nice big brush and just paint in the side of the tree here. And you can see we're adding some nice, beautiful light from the sun. Now I think it's gone a little bit far to the left here, so I'm going to press Ctrl and D or Command and D to deactivate the selection, create a mask on this layer, make sure my foreground's set to black, and I'm just going to paint down the side of this tree just the dark in the back a little bit. And it just gives the tree a little bit of extra depth. I'm just going to do a quick contrast adjustment and with the levels layer and just bring the image up a little bit, the brightness. And again, just like we did before, I'm going to set the opacity of my brush to 40%, make sure the foreground set to black. And I'm just going to paint once on the sun, just to make sure that it's not becoming overexposed by the contrast adjustment. In fact, I'm going to set that to 100% and I'm going to paint that out a little bit more. That's better. Now I love the details in the tree along here, so we're going to emphasize that a little bit more and some of the foreground here as well. And we're going to do that by opening up Camera Raw Filter. But first we need to merge all of our layers. So we can merge all of our layers by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac or on Raya Pro. We just go to Merge. Now we go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Here I'm just going to bring the Clarity slider up just so we introduce some local contrast into the tree and the foreground. When we're happy, just press OK. Now it's added a little bit too much contrast to other parts of the image like around the trees in the background here. So I'm going to create a mask and I'm just going to mask out that local contrast here. I think these areas should remain nice and soft. 
But as you can see, we've now added some nice local contrast and emphasized the details in our image around the tree. I'm going to mask it out here as well because I don't think this area is particularly attractive in the image. I don't think we need it to be emphasized. And now I want to add just a little bit more color to the scene. And I'm going to do that with a vibrance layer. I'm going to bring the vibrance slider all the way up just to inject some subtle colors into the scene. And by doing this, we're increasing the saturation of the softer colors in the scene. So it gives us a much more natural balance effect than if we were to use the saturation slider. So I'm just going to really bring that up. Usually I wouldn't bring my vibrance up that high, but in this scene, the colors really aren't very strong. So it seems necessary here. Now we're going to add a lovely soft Orton effect and you don't need Raya Pro to do this. I'm going to use Raya Pro here because it's quicker, but there's a link in the description of this video to a tutorial which will show you how to do it yourself. So you don't need the panel in order to create this Orton effect. You can do it yourself without it. But I'm just going to speed up the workflow by using Raya Pro. So I'm going to go to Enhance, Enhancements and Orton Effect Bright. And this is really going to soften the image and bring up the highlights somewhat. So I'm going to choose my radius, let's say of around 31 and press OK. When that's done, we can see we've really added a soft feel to the image, but it's a little bit too strong. So I'm going to bring this all the way down, let's say to around 25%. And there's a the before and after, just a nice magical feel. Now, just like before, so we can control the highlights, I'm just going to mask out the Orton effect around here. And we don't really need it around these areas either. It's more for the rest of the image, for the softer foliage and the tree. And now to finish the image, I'm going to use my favorite vignette technique. So I'm going to open up a curves layer and I'm going to bring the midtones up. Then I'm going to choose my paintbrush, make a nice big size and paint out the changes in the area where we don't want to brighten. So on the outside of the image here. We're trying to push our viewer's eye to the center part of our photo here and also here where the sun is. Once we've done that, we can press Command and J to duplicate the layer or Control and J on a PC, then Command and I or Control and I to invert the mask. And we can just gently bring down the midtones in this layer. So now we've really shifted the balance of light in our scene. So if we just group these two layers, we can see the before and after. This is before the vignette and this is after the vignette. So we're really pushing the viewer towards the brighter area. And if it's a little bit too strong, let's say around the sun, if it's a little bit too bright, we can just mask that area out. That's not a big deal. So there you go. That makes a huge difference. And I'm going to create another very soft vignette, but this time I'm just going to invert the mask and choose a white paintbrush and just paint it in this area because I really don't think this area is adding to the composition. I'm just going to mask it out where this tree is. And so that is our final image. I warned you at the beginning of the video that there was going to be a lot of post-processing involved, but if we just group all of our changes, we can see that we've made a huge difference in the overall feel of the image. It's a beautifully shot scene, but there's a lot going on, a lot for the viewer to look at. So basically, we've now created an image which not only has more mood and light, it also now pushes the viewer's eyes to a particular part of the scene. Now, I know this is heavily processed and maybe a little bit too processed for what I would normally go for, but I still think we've come out with a very nice impacting scene and hopefully you've learned a useful technique or two. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you want to take part in Challenge Jimmy, please email me at gpeg at challengejimmymac at gmail.com and tell me what you found difficult about processing the scene. So that's all for today's tutorial. Until next time, take care.